So at every point in time, like a Pika tray, the Muffly Magic Box, a Mana Source with his metal coal, you know, the guy essentially stole half a million dollars from the Magic community. In my opinion, again, hard to prove because he's no longer here. He's no longer able to even dis defend himself, which is, of course, you know, one of the things that people always, rat, you know, they don't like when I do this. But there's a reason that I can't go after Pico Trade when Tolarian Community College says it's the amazing, amazing, amazing monthly magic. You can, I can only go after it when the antelope. I'm a lion. I can only go after the injured antelope. And until the antelope is injured, there's nothing I can do. It's too fast for me. And there's too many people on that antelope train that will do whatever it takes to protect the antelope. I mean, Puka Trade's symbol was actually an antelope. I was very happy when I finally could expose it as what it was, which is a giant Ponzi scheme. It is a rug pull in crypto. So what they did was they had coins that they, they had Puka points, right? Which essentially was digital coins that were not baked based on any asset, even though they pretended it was, uh, what was it, 100 pico points was equal to a dollar. So one pico point was supposed to be equal to one cent. Well, that's all good and fair, but when you pay all your employees in pico points, when you pay your content creators in pico point, when you pay Weds $500,000 in pico points to promote to his 5,000 plus, maybe 8,000, 9,000 people to sign up and then he cashes out on them, well, you have a problem. And when the owner put creates $5 million, not 5 million Pico points, $5 million of Pico points, floods the system, of course it is going to fail. Pico, Pico does not exist anymore. But there comes a point, but before that, Tolarian Community College, Weds, even Jeremy Hambly from the Quarterling, he, they all protected the shit out of Pico because it was just general, it was spitting money. It was giving them so much money. It's impossible for them to not protect it. You know, everyone and their grandmother said Pico Trade was going to go to the moon. Well, I said, ugh, but then I make some videos. You got a lot of hate. You, you read the, you go back to comments, read them completely logical. I thought it was fake. I thought it was a Ponzi scheme. I thought it was a pyramid scheme. I thought it was all of the above because at the end of the day, you can't just print out points like a la Joe Biden, right? And then expect not to have inflation. And that's what happened. Hyperinflation helped Pico Trade. And in fact, you know what? Joe Biden should look at Pico Trade as the model of what would happen if you continue to print money and nothing stops you. So, Rudy, what does that have to do with alpha investment? Well, he's done some shady things. I think we can all agree. I, I think he's done quite a bit. The whole uh, Planeswalker Mythic Edition when he tried to buy them with his bots and then the number was wrong and you know that was a whole disaster. He found two games that were really new that worshiped the ground he walked on. Now I can prove this with MetaZoo. MetaZoo, he has four effing promos in MetaZoo. In his flesh and blood promo, he sold for $1,000. Now a lot of you will say, this is fantastic, this is great, this is amazing. Does MetaZoo do that for any other content creators? My understanding is no. Does Flesh and Blood give other content creators their own cards in the game? My understanding is no. So Rudy is, this isn't even inside trading. This is something like Hunter Biden-esque. Where, I mean, there is some special relationship Rudy Chan has with these two companies that the average person doesn't have. If he's upset, he gives them a call and they listen. They will come visit him and sit down in his home and explain everything to make him happy. You don't want your game to cater to Rudy Chan. Wizard of the Coast doesn't give a shit about Rudy Chan and that's the correct way to deal with it. Okay? Rudy Chan has more MetaZoo promo cards of himself in the very, very early age of MetaZoo than Richard Garfield in 30 years of Magic the Gathering. Then John Finkel, I think he has won. And to get that one, he had to win a world championship in Magic. That is the right way to do something. Where you encourage someone, you incentivize someone that, hey, you can make it. You can win. You can be a, on this face of Magic. And this was the original Magic, and that's why so many people fall in love with it. Now, the other thing that I find very compelling is that the first, let's say, a sealed case 
a first edition Pokemon, right? We saw that with Logan Paul. Logan Paul was saying that was the only one. And until this knowledge, I mean, there's supposedly Poke King has one, but it's open that he double checked. Again, not sure. So at least one of them, maybe one exists, maybe zero that we know of. Do you know how many sealed cases of MetaZoo first edition, whatever their first set exists? Sealed boxes, I guess they sold them in boxes because of Kickstarter. Do you know how many people opened that? It was sold to you initially, not as a game, like Pokemon, the idea of Pokemon when you were younger is you want to open the effing pack. You're a kid, you want to open the pack. You're not going to keep the pack sealed. You need the cards so you can play the game with your friends. That's why even given how much Pokemon cards were printed, given how much magic cards were printed, find a sealed case of alpha. I don't know if that exists. I do not know if that exists, that somebody has a sealed case of alpha right now. I don't know if someone has a sealed case of Pokemon for base, first edition. Because people didn't keep them sealed. They opened them, they put it in front of their store and they hoped they'd sell it. They were taking a gamble. They didn't know if it would sell or not. And then sold and they opened it and they took the next box and they put the next box out. The idea that he's selling you is you can go back in time, invest in Pokemon, which would be MetaZoo, and invest in Magic, which would be Flesh and Blood. But the problem with that, the mentality is all wrong. The mentality of Pokemon is, oh, I want to open these packs and get my favorite Pokemon and then I want to play with my friends. Same with Magic. This is not the mentality that he's created for these two games. The mentality of these two games is that nobody plays. They just buy these bundles and they put them in a closet somewhere. So how many of these first edition sealed cases and bundles and booster boxes? Is that, I mean, it's crazy to me. And I think there will be a turning point. There always is in this type of stuff. Like if you went to the prime of Pico Trade and told Pico Trade was a scam, I prove it. Nobody would believe you. They would X you out of the community. Same with the monthly magic box. Same with every scam, the mana source and so on. If you said, hey, the mana source is kind of, he faked an injury so he could uh, move to the UK. He faked an injury to get money. He got the money released because it takes time to go fund me to release the money. And then he moved the country right away. Nobody would know it. Some people like, oh man, you're so disrespectful to mana source. You're fat shaming. You're just, they would do everything in their power to make sure that you understood the mana source is the guy. But he did exactly what I told you he would do. No one would believe me. And right now I'm saying the tide is going to turn. The relationship that Rudy has with these two people is not normal for a essentially a store owner to have. Because that relationship does not exist. How many other store owners have their own MetaZoo card? How many other store owners have their own flesh and blood card that can sell for a thousand? Nobody. This is a very special relationship. And it's okay to have special relationships like that, but just not four cards in like two years. Like at some point in time, people are gonna be upset. If I were a store, I, out of principle, would never carry MetaZoo. No matter how many booths they have and how many collector cons they go to, because the, the, they treat different people differently. They will treat my store very differently than they treat Rudy's, quote, store. And I would never, ever be able to outcompete Rudy Chan selling this product. It's just not possible. Because he's getting special playmats, special promos, He's being treated, he's probably getting special prices. Let's be honest to God. He's getting lower prices than you're paying at a store. Because he has a special relationship. Right? If he if something upsets him, calls the James White dude. James White said, Yup, yup, we're gonna fix the problem for you, Rudy. We're gonna give it you these pop boxes for free. We'll give you some more Rudy promos for you to sell for a thousand box of pop. No other store has that ability to get their own promo and then be able to sell and that's the problem with these two games in my opinion is that rudy is too much attached to these games now it would be one thing if rudy invented his own game and it just had a bunch of rudy cards hey man more power to you right i think that should have been the path that he chose 
but he's so involved in these two games, right? He has his tentacles in these two games where he just tells the owner, F you owner, no more first edition Monarch. And they're like, oh, you're the owner. No, no, Rudy, don't hurt us, don't hurt us. The mother effer has four promos in Metal Suit, I heard in the comments. I don't know if that's true. That's like astounding. Richard Garfield in 30 years of magic has one unhinged card and then like one very rare promo card about the birth of his like second son. He made these card games. Without Richard Garfield, I don't think you have TCG games as we know it. How many cards does the creator of Pokemon have of himself? Probably like one funny anime card and something like that, maybe. Like the idea of making a card game is to make it for your players. And there's not like, the idea is and very early on Magic. Now again, Magic has changed its philosophy is anyone can win. Anyone can be a John Finkel and get their face on a card if, as long as you win the world championship. That there's some equality, there's some type of fairness to the game. That there isn't, uh, what is it called? I, I don't want to call it cronyism, but what is the, nepotism is like more family. I'm trying to think of a word where there's special treatment of certain individuals over other individuals. That is going to hurt these games. I promise you. I promise you they, they will hurt. They, they will hurt. And when a recession comes and people look at their bundles that they don't even play the game, they don't, the artwork they don't appreciate, they're going to realize, uh oh, we made a mistake. And that's when I will hunt. So we're getting close. If we go on full blown recession, I guarantee you people will turn on Rudy. Because they ain't going to be happy when they don't have no money and all they have is first uh, first edition Monarch bundles for a thousand bucks a bundle, five hundred dollars a box, because they're going to realize, uh oh, this guy told us things and it didn't come true. You can't eat a Meta Zoo bundle.